Hi everyone, welcome back to another lightsaber video. Uh, today's video is a Graflex, as you can see, and this is the Raj Graflex. I'm going to be talking a little bit about um, just a little background, a brief history of this prop, um, and what makes it sort of interesting, and um, and then I'll just go over the parts and specifications of this build, and um, the little mods I did to achieve the prop accuracy. Um, so first of all, I just thought I'd start by talking a little bit about the Ranch Graflex or the Ranch Saber. This is actually a prop that I was reluctant to do for a long time because it doesn't actually appear in any of the films. Um, I did like it. It was visually interesting to me and unique, but I just kind of went back and forth and thought a lot about, do I really need it? It's not really appeared in any of the movies, so why should I build it? But in the end, I decided to do it anyway. Um, th there are some interesting things about the ranch. Uh, the first thing is that it's the only Graflex uh, lightsaber, uh, or the only Graflex-based lightsaber that still exists today in Lucasfilm's possession. Uh, all the other ones from the original trilogy, like the Dagobah Empire, the regular Empire that appears in Bespin, and Hoth and all those other scenes, the A New Hope one, all those other ones have either been discarded, gifted to members, I'm sure, of the production team, uh, sold to private collectors, destroyed, discarded, stolen, who knows, but they all disappeared. Uh, there's none of them left, um, except for this one. This is the only one that Lucasfilm still has, and that's why it's called the Ranch Saber, because it's it lives at the, uh, the Skywalker Ranch. That's why it's called the Ranch Saber. Um, so that's the first thing that's interesting, that makes it interesting to me. The other thing about this is that if we study the kind of the markings and the details on it, we're able to identify that the lower half of it, at least, was was present during filming, and it was present in the Dagobah scenes. So if we compare the Dagobah Graflex, we can see um, some sort of distinguishing features about it, like this bent grip here in the center, and that was the same for the ranch. And there was also sort of marks and damage on the lower end that I don't have here that enabled fans to confirm that the lower half of the ranch is 100% identical to the lower half of the Dagobah Saber. Um, the clamp and the upper half are, are unknown. But because the beer tab is absent, it's definitely one of the Empire, Strike, Empire Strikes Back ones. Uh, clamp is unknown. Um, so it, it was probably just made of like leftover parts that were kind of cobbled together um, to create the ranch prop. But as I said, the lower cell is definitely a leftover lower cell from the Dagobah Graflex. So that makes it quite interesting to me. Um, it's because of that that we were able to identify that the Dagobah Saber was a former with pattern. So you can see here on the Dagobah, the stamping on the bottom. If I can focus it, it's a former with the patent number here. You can see the patent number here on the side. Because there aren't many good reference pictures of the Dagobah, there's, but there's plenty of good reference pictures of the ranch, so you could kind of backward trace it, and um, therefore you can identify that the Dagobah was a former so yeah, um, what else about this do I like? I like that it has this kind of unique texture tape on the clamp that's never been seen on any of the previous ones. Usually it's just a, a clear, smooth, thin strip of paint, of sorry, of, of tape. Um, and that was probably the inspiration for the Aniflex for Revenge of the Sith. This is a prequels version, episode three, Anakin's lightsaber. You can clearly see here that textured machine part in the middle of the clamp section, 
really, really resembles that texture tape there. So, I mean, this was probably created at some point, you know, leftover parts and, and it just sat in the archives. And in the late 90s, early 2000s, they just kind of based this and machined the Anaflex to look like, you know, Luke's or Luke's lightsaber from ESB. You can see that was the inspiration for it. So that's quite cool. Um, but yeah, enough about the... Um, so that's really the background of, of this prop and where it comes from. Um, for the parts that I used, I used a vintage Graflex. And it is specifically a Fulma with pattern. So as you know, there's three variants of a vintage Graflex. According to the stamping, there's Graflex ink, former without patent and former with patent and this is a former with the patent number and that is accurate for the ranch because we can clearly see in some reference pictures um, from sort of that angle you can see the patent number there on the side uh, other parts that were used and this clamp card here is a replica from sloth furnace however it is excellent i have a vintage card on one of my other ones which I'm just about to show you now. This is a vintage card from an Otis board. And they just look so, so similar at that. But, you know, this replica is a fraction of the price. I mean, the, these vintage Otis cards are nearly impossible to find these days. And if you do, they are really expensive. So I'm happy enough to use a sloth furnace for this build. The texture tape came from Wanawanga, as did the grips and the little slotted screws on top. The Phillips head screws on the bottom are vintage as well. They are Xactra screws from Xactra calculators, There's six of them, a pair from three different calculators. And on the bottom we have a D-ring from Wanawanga and a vintage cobalt clip with its screws. So those are the parts that I used to make this build. As for the mods to make it more accurate, first of all, I removed the um, bunny ears rivet, as you can see here. In all the other Graflexes, there's obviously a rivet that holds the bunny ear assembly together. This was not hard for me to do personally because I just got lucky. Um, most of the times, I mean, the rivet is placed in such a way, I'll just zoom into this. As you can see here, it's not really easy to remove it. You'd have to sort of grind it down and use a punch to remove it. Uh, but this came to me with the, the rivet was already kind of loose and, and sitting up here somewhere. So all I had to do was like push it out. It just came straight out. I was just lucky. If it wasn't, if it was tighter, I think I probably would have just left it. But yeah, it's an extra accuracy mod that I chose to do. It does mean that the bunny ears are a little bit wobbly in there. So, you know, any force it could come out and I'd need to push it back in. Uh, but that's okay. Uh, there is just one red button, there's no glass eye on this prop, unlike the standard ESB which has two buttons. But it's just like the Dagobah, in the Dagobah we see also one button on the bottom socket there. In some reference pictures the ranch has the red button on the lower socket where the glass eye should be, and in some other reference pictures it's on top. I choose to go this way. Uh, as I said before, the beer tab is removed. And this came to me with the beer tab already removed, so that was fine. Moving down to the clamp, this is where most of the work had to be done. As I mentioned before, a textured tape from Wanawanga, which needs to be applied kind of like this, so it's not, it's kind of tilted it tilts slightly upwards as you can see it's not nicely centered 
and that is accurate. This is obviously a vintage former clamp. I forgot to say the whole thing is vintage. So it's a former clamp, including the sidebars, but except for the lever. This lever is a vintage ink. And the reason for that is, as you can see, it had to be heavily modified. And I did not want to do that to the original former lever because they are far more rare and much more valuable than ink levers. So I just bought a standalone ink lever from a friend and chose to modify that instead. It appears to be that it was broken off at some point, and you can see that, that the pin is missing. And you can see here inside that they used some sort of a screw to tighten the clamp instead. And then what they did is where they drilled through and used another screw to hold the lever to the sidebar. So a screw to tighten the clamp and another screw from the lever to the sidebar. Now, I didn't do all of that. I just used a screw through the, uh, the clamp, which I got from a friend of mine. And then I glued the lever on top. And that same friend of mine um, kindly did this mod for me. So he just drilled through the lever and uh, popped the screw in, this little brass screw. And then I glued it instead to the sidebar, so preserve the sidebar. So that's probably one of the uh, trickiest modifications to make on this. Yeah, so it's just held together by glue. So lever is glued to the bar from this end and from sort of that end. As I said, sloth furnace clamp card, which is facing the other way. So the thin traces are facing towards the lever. Normally on ESP graph flexes, it's the reverse. The thin traces face away from the lever. And that is correct for all of them. And finally, the lower section, as I mentioned before, the central grip has to be curved. There are these small slotted screws on top, just like in the Dagobah, which I just cut down and glued. The Xactra screws as well were cut down um, until they were flush with the grip and glued on top of the grip. And everything was just nicely weathered because that prop looks a lot like this. It's 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 quite old. It's got a lot of rust and weathering on it. And finally, we come down to the cobalt. The cobalt on this prop is upside down. Normally, the cobalt is sort of that way. Must have come off at some point, and they reattached it, but they did it the other way around. Once again, I did not drill through the Graflex. I don't like doing that to vintages. It is simply attached with E6000. So those two screws are cut down until they were flush and glued on the clip. And then the clip was mounted on the flash with E6000. And as you can see, it's slightly off centered and that is also accurate. And finally, a standard ESB Graflex D-ring from Wanawanga, which I really beat up, <laughs> scratched it, you know, painted it, rusted it, wanted to give it a really old weathered look. And this is the uh, correct orientation as well. So the cobalt is slightly off center. The central grip is to slightly towards that side and it is the top curve that is almost towards the clamp there. The rest of the grips, I'm not sure how they arranged, so I just used a grip guide and did a standard ESP arrangement. And then finally, I just did a little bit of weathering. Just cuts around the notches there. Some weathering powder and paints. Do the top screws as well. A little bit more here on the sides on those ports. 
some scratches on the tape. A bit more rust there. Some of that rust is natural on the bottom, some of it isn't. Uh, did a little light weathering to the card. And that's it. Very, very simple, straightforward build. Very nice, interesting prop. It looks good with the rest of the ESB Graflexes, especially side by side with the Dagobah. And looks really, really good with the Aniflex as well. So yeah, that's really all I have to say about the ranch. Um, it's the only saber I have that is has not appeared in any of the movies. It's a post-original trilogy prop, um, but because it still exists as of today, and it's one of the, well, if it is the only one, it's the only Grailflex from the original trilogy era that still exists today. Um, obviously they still have the sequel trilogy ones, but those are uh, with Disney, obviously. Um, but yeah, from the original trilogy era, it's only this one that was left. So yeah, that's it. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Any questions, feel free to comment as always. Um, thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.